All right, everybody. Welcome to our very first podcast. It's going to be called the Kung Fu Physicist Podcast. So the Kung Fu Physicist is me. My name is Eric Alicia. I am a Wing Chun enthusiast. I'm a Sifu here at Wing Chun, Illinois. Uh, number two, I have a degree in radiation physics, a master's degree, so I'll call myself a physicist, but no, I don't have a PhD. Sorry, guys. Um, and also, I am a filmmaker. Hold on, let me get my notes up here. This is live, so it's pretty candid. This is our first podcast, so bear with me. Um, we don't have any podcasting equipment. I just got this thing, and I got my fuzzy up here. Hope you guys can see it. There it is. All right. So, uh, yeah, this is going to be our very first podcast. Um, again, about me. My name is Eric. I'm a physicist, filmmaker, Wing Chun enthusiast, and um, we also own the business here called Wing Chun Illinois in Glenview. All right. So, let's start out. So, for today's episode, Welcome to the podcast. Uh, we've never done this before, so if anyone has any podcasting experience, please let us know. And please let us, uh, I don't know, give us some advice. What can we do better? Uh, how do we get on Spotify? Pretty much everything basics for podcasting. I have no clue what I'm doing. I'm just recording this, and we'll see if I can get it up on Spotify. And probably we'll try to post this on YouTube and other spots as well. All right, so... Let me actually move this. This is totally unplanned, so I hope it turns out well. I hope you guys are entertained. All right, let me just get my notes open a little bigger here. All right, yeah, so at the end of the podcast, we're going to give out a self-defense tip and a little short physics lesson, All right? So I do practice or did practice physics, so I'm going to teach you guys some physics. I torture my students with it as well. All right, so before I get into today's episode, who would you guys like to see me interview? This is a beginning. Um, I would like to interview several people within the Wing Chun community, so if you have anyone you'd like to see me interview, please let me know in the comments. Leave them here. I can't actually see the comments right now because my phone is turned around, so... I'm just going to hope that I can read it. Oh, you know what? I'm going to put it up on the computer as well. See, I didn't even think of that. That's how amateur I am. All right, going here. I'm going on Facebook here. Okay, I'm going to find myself live. Hope this doesn't cause an echo. Uh, here I am. There it is. All right. Okay, so now if you guys comment, I'll be able to see it. All right, uh, let's see here. Let's open this up. There we go. I'm going to put this on the side. I will watch for comments there. So if any of you are interested in commenting, leaving me a question, go ahead and leave that right over there. All right, and let me turn this down so that we don't have an echo. Again, like I said, totally amateur, totally new at this. All right, so today's topic a little bit is the difference between um, real fighting and UFC. So there's a lot of stigma out there about UFC and like, oh, this is a real fight. If you want to prove yourself, oh, you got to get into UFC and then that's the real battleground, okay? Um, I got a news flash for you guys. UFC is a sport and there's lots of money involved. So... Uh, no offense to any of these guys, I've seen so many great fighters on the UFC circuit. Um, they are truly amazing, but when it comes to real-world self-defense, there's a lot of other elements that you have to be aware of that are not uh, elements in the UFC fighting or MMA or K2, you know. Um, so let's talk about a little bit of those differences. So one of the main differences is that in UFC, again, it's a sport, um, and it is for money, all right? Self-defense is just for your life, okay? So while there's some certain things in UFC, like, oh, you have to be within a certain weight class, 
you have to weigh in before the fight, you have to have done all this training, right? In, in real life, things just happen. And sometimes you're not at your best, sometimes you're already injured, uh, so you can't call the fight off. Sometimes you're facing a group of people instead of a single person. Uh, a lot of times those people can outweigh you, be in a much higher weight class than yourself. And also, um, they may have weapons, all right? So that's the reality. I'll talk to you about some incidents that happen here in Chicago. So, um, for instance, a lot of people come to me with these experiences that they were mugged, right? And what that means is that somebody pulled a gun on them, typically, or they're walking home late at night, and they get into their house, they think they're coming home, they're getting their keys out, and next thing they know, someone's behind them with a gun. And they're like, give me your wallet, okay? Uh, so, thankfully, nobody I know has been injured in one of these in instances, but a lot of people feel, like, embarrassed that they couldn't do something. Like, oh, I wish I could have done something, I wish I knew some movement, right, that I could have done to prevent this well as long as you're aware essentially you can prevent it but if it does happen to you just know that this person has a gun don't mess around with the gun just give them your wallet just leave okay uh but this is this is a real life confrontation all right where you don't know what this person is capable of you're not even sure maybe if it's a real gun if there's a weapon and this is an instance where squaring up and putting your hands up, something like this, would probably be one of the worst things you could possibly do. All right. Uh, so, I mean, if any of you have seen Indiana Jones, you know what I'm talking about, right? The guy comes out with the sword. The original Indiana Jones, okay? Uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark. Guy comes out with the sword. He's challenging uh, Indiana, and Indiana just looks at him and pulls out the gun. Pow! Shoots him. All right? So, one of my favorite movie scenes is really awesome and hilarious uh yeah so that's a real world self-defense situation now that's where the realm of wing chun kung fu operates in especially our style and our grandmaster lung ting the stuff he teaches us is all based on real world events and real world confrontations so in these instances you don't want to necessarily be showing your opponent what you're up to uh, you just want to get in and get out and be safe, all right? So, that's what we practice here, and that is the difference between UFC and real world. Again, let's go over the differences. In UFC, one, you have a determined opponent. You've got a fight date. You know their style. You can study their footage most of the time. Um, and you can train and work up for that fight. There's a referee, there's rules, there's judges. At the end, you're going to get a trophy. Most likely, you will not die. There's been, you know, a couple very sad instances. But most of the time, your life is not really threatened by entering the ring. And they make pretty well sure of that by establishing these rules, right? Uh, in self-defense situation, you don't know who you're going to fight. You don't know when you're going to fight. You don't know where you're going to fight. You don't know what's going to be happening, how many how many people you're going to be fighting against. You just don't know, right? It's just all these unknowns as to what's going to happen. So, that is the main difference between UFC and real world fighting. Uh, anyone who's been in some type of combat in the military or even Navy SEALs, uh, special ops people, Green Berets, etc., um, even TACP in the Air Force, they all know the difference between a real confrontation and a ring match. And uh, it's it's a pretty big difference. So, all right. Let's go on past that. Again, this is our first podcast, so it's going to be pretty short. Um, I'll just go into now why... Huh, let's see. I'm going to go into the IWTA. So, uh, a lot of you know or don't know, but our school is part of the International Wing Chun Association. Uh, let me see if I have one of my books over here. Or one of my certificates. Here. Mm -hmm. Alright, yeah, so we're in the International Wing Chun Association. And this is our 
Grandmaster, his name is Grandmaster Lung Tang. He learned directly from Great Grandmaster Yip Man himself. Um, and he has really taken Wing Chun and turned it into the lens of uh, self-defense and real-world fighting. So everything he does in his techniques, everything he does in his principles, and how he does Wing Chun is all based on real-world type situations. So, um, I'm very happy to always have access to him, and that's why we stay in the IWTA. I love learning from him. Every time he comes around, it's just it's just really great and really uh, uh, life changing. Every time he gives advice, it's just he's phenomenal. He's a phenomenal instructor, and he loves teaching. Uh, I believe he's going to be 75, or I think uh, maybe 75 this year. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. Uh, but um, we are super happy to be under his organization and passing his style of Wing Chun on to the rest of the world and being a part of that for the Chicagoland area. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> In a couple weeks, we're actually going down to San Antonio uh, to visit him. He's going to have a big seminar there. We're super happy to be able to go down and train with him again. We haven't seen him for five years. And I really, you know, the more time we get to spend with him, the better. It's not easy, you know, running your own martial arts school and going out and traveling, trying to see someone. And then with COVID lockdowns, it makes it even, even worse. So I'm super happy to be able to see him. Um, again, his advice is always revolutionary. Uh, I just love that he's still training, he's still active, and he is not stopping even though he's technically retired. Uh, he doesn't act like someone who's retired, so he's just really into passing the art on to all of us. And to making us all better, and that's the most important thing. Um, another bonus is that Sifu Angus Liu is also coming uh, down to San Antonio with him. Sifu Angus is a high-level master. I believe he's a fifth practitioner level in the IWTA. And um, we trained with him in Hong Kong. And uh, even some of the amazing advice he's given me is stuck with me to this day. Uh, his advantage is, um, number one, that his English is really good. And number two, that he has training in, um, like, I believe it's physical therapy or some other type of uh, field where he knows the body's anatomy so he can actually like give you specific advice on which muscles you need to be contracting in order to do a certain movement and which part of the body certain things target so he's just super amazing to be around and I can't wait to see him in San Antonio it's going to be so great I'm just very excited about it <clears throat> all right next announcement we are holding a summer camp. Where's my little flyers there? All right, here we go. We do have a summer camp for kids. We're one of the only um, Wing Chun schools in the United States that actually has a kids program. And we're kind of piloting this program. The program is revolutionary because we are taking the Wing Chun system and passing it on to kids. Normally, you don't teach children before they're age 12 because the system is, like, pretty intense. Um, but what I found here in the States is that a lot of teenagers, right, they get 12, 13. These guys don't want to do anything. And I don't know what it is about the lifestyle here or it's maybe it's part of the culture in the States. But <clears throat> a lot of parents don't push their kids to do something that they don't want to do even though it could be beneficial for them. So um, a lot of times during the teen years, the kids just completely drop out. And it's not a phenomenon in Wing Chun alone. Uh, I talk to a lot of people who have like karate gyms or karate dojos and uh, taekwondo places. It's, a, it's almost like an industry standard. It's just like, oh, they're teens, you know, get rid of them. It's like, we, we, like they're, they're gone. So don't even reach out to them. They're not interested anymore. Uh, so for us, we're really trying to build up that base while they're young. And then by the time they're getting into their teens, a lot of them hopefully will stick around and keep training with us and become really good at Wing Chun. We're trying to create the new generation 
of Wing Chun fighters here in the States. And, um, yeah, that's, it takes a lot of work, but we're really dedicated to teaching the kids here. And we have worked really hard on, on our programs to make sure that not only are they having fun, because that's where it starts, is them having fun training, but also they're having fun learning discipline and they're having fun learning Wing Chun techniques, right? Um, and that's how it all starts. It's like, it has to be an enthusiasm for the art. That way, when they get to teenage years, okay, yeah, they're, some of them might be, eh, you know, whatever, but they'll, number one, they'll already have skills to defend themselves. And number two, if some of them do stick around with us, which we really hope, we want 100% of them to stick around with us, but we are realists. Um, so as long as some of them stick around with us, we are looking at creating the next generation of Wing Chun fighters, and some of these kids can be practicing for uh, 10 years already when they're 18 years old, right? We already have someone training for 10 years. So that's um, really beneficial, uh, especially here in the States. Like I said, in Asia, it's a little bit different. In Europe, it's different. Um, in Asia, people really, I wouldn't say Asia. Asia is a big place. Definitely in China and in Hong Kong, there's the mentality to, you know, put your mind to something to work and you're going to get it. So if you're interested in this, you have to stick around, you have to work at it, you have to work and get it. And here in the States, it's more of like, uh, oh, if, you know, do what you want to do, just don't, you know, if you're interested in it, do it. If you're not interested, don't do it. It's kind of more laid back attitude. It has its advantages and disadvantages, but uh, one of the disadvantages is that uh, kids do not learn these practical, essential skills they're going to need essentially for the rest of their life. And we don't only teach them Wing Chun, but we teach them just basic, you know, human decency, how to deal with people that are aggressive towards them, and how to manage that. And when they're away from you, from parents, you know, when they're out on their own, you can't be there to protect them. So they have to be able to uh, deal with it themselves, essentially. And that's what we have in our program. All right. So <clears throat> next up here. We are planning to start a series called the Kung Fu Physics Series. All right, I'm the Kung Fu Physicist. We're going to start a series called Kung Fu Physics. So what does that mean? I'm going to be teaching some Wing Chun ideas and concepts and uh, teaching people math at the same time. That's what I'm going to try to do anyway. We'll see if it works out. I think it would be super interesting showing people how to do force calculations like the power of a strike and how to actually calculate it out. Um, that's the idea. Here we're really enthusiastic about learning and science and just becoming better, you know, throughout your entire life and encouraging our kids to learn, encouraging our adults to learn too. So if you guys are interested in a Kung Fu physics series, all right, let us know in the comments, write something here, and... Uh, give us ideas. I mean, I'm looking forward to putting it together. And yeah, that's all I have to say about that. Again, this is a off the cuff podcast and I am not a trained podcaster. Next up, I'm editing Tiro Certo right now. I'm looking forward to seeing Sifu Claudio. All right. So Claudio, if you're watching, if you see this, uh, looking forward to see you, my friend, and I hope everything is going well with the movie down in Rio. Uh, yeah, so I'm editing. It's looking really good in the edits, so I'm super excited to see this movie come out. It should be coming out in November, um, and I wish them all the best to complete the project on time. All right. So, support us. Help us figure out this podcasting things. Like us. Subscribe to us. We're going to put this on YouTube. And, um, yeah, just stay with us. Keep coming. More students, please, you know, come on in. We want to teach everyone Wing Chun Kung Fu and grow Wing Chun in the United States. That's what we're here for. And, yeah, like us, subscribe to us, and I look forward to hearing from you guys. Self-defense tip of today. Biggest self-defense tip I can give you guys is called reactivity, okay? Reactivity means, you might think of it in fighting terms like, oh, if I'm... If I'm more reactive, that means that my uh, reaction time is better. And that means that I'm faster. 
All right, but that's not what reactivity means. Reactivity essentially means um, you acting in a way that exacerbates a problem. Okay, so I want you to imagine that you take a match and you throw it into the pool of water. Okay, and the match just gonna go out. All right, that's it. Simple. Now take a match and throw it into a little tub of gasoline. Now you better hope you're far enough away when that match hits the gasoline because it will go off. It will blow up. So that's reactivity. Okay, It's being reactive to a situation. The most important thing you can do in self-defense situations is to not be reactive. Okay, To lower your reactivity. Right? And again, what does that mean? When somebody's coming at you, when someone's being really aggressive, someone's just, you know, they're angry at their day, they're coming at you, you can feel scared inside, but the best thing to do is to calm the situation down, okay? Um, You want to be like the pool of water, not like the gasoline, okay? So what that does is it lowers your risk of getting hurt, number one. Number two... It helps the other person calm down, right? Just think about it. If someone gets really mad, they're coming at you, they're yelling, right? Oh my God, I can't believe you're, you know, blah, 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 whatever, you know. I can't believe you didn't do this report right, and I told you to give it to me yesterday. I want to kick your ass, right? Something like that. It sounds silly, but uh, yeah, it's real. People say things like this. The best thing is to calm down and be like, okay, okay, uh, Let's talk about this report. There's a problem with the report. How would you like to do that? All right. It's a simple workplace example. Or someone's like, you took my parking space. You know, you, uh, I can't believe you cut me off. That was my space. You know, and be like, oh, I didn't see your name on it. Don't start interacting with them because a lot of people have road rage nowadays. Just be like, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't see you. All right. I'm sorry. Have a good day and just keep going. You know, just calm the situation down. That's what it means to have lower reactivity, okay? People who are not trained in martial arts, people who are not trained in self-defense, have a high reactivity. It's because you don't know what you can do. You're worried. You think that, you know, you're in trouble. And you automatically, you're... you're, uh, what is it? The adrenaline rises. Your adrenaline picks up. And you're like, man, I think I got I to I gotta do something about this, right? And your body starts shaking. And you start trembling. And you're like, oh, man, this person's going to come after me. And you're going to start making some stupid decisions and do something dumb, right? Um, so we don't want that to happen. We want you to be able to take that nervousness and kind of be able to manage it and calm a situation down. We want to be able to lower the reactivity. So the best way to do that, of course, I'm going to say is to train Wing Chun Kung Fu. Because this one deals with that interpersonal post-contact situation that most people are afraid of. And it teaches you how to stay calm in that situation. Uh, A lot of other martial arts, like sparring martial arts and stuff like that, where it's uh, sport-based, they kind of teach you to pick up your reactivity. They teach you to... Someone's going to engage you and they teach you how to, um, how do I say, how to get in a match with them. But that's what you want in a sport, right? That's what you want in a competition. So, because Wing Chun is non-competitive, it doesn't mean we're not trying to do our best. It just means we have a different focus, right? Okay, so, finally, because Wing Chun Physics Podcast, you guys are going to get a physics tip. All right, so my physics tip of the day is that, how do I say this? There's different kinds of physics out there, all right? It's not true, but it's true. Okay, so it's the way people think of physics. Now, there's two kinds that's pretty common in our modern day. There's the Newtonian physics, and there's quantum physics, okay? Newtonian physics is pretty much the basic physics that we deal with on a day-to-day basis, especially in martial arts, okay? If you're talking about force, applying force, if you're talking about how to get more power out of your movements, 
If you're talking about how hard something's going to hit you, we're typically talking about Newtonian physics, okay? Um, and Newtonian physics is great for most practical applications these days, uh, especially for most people. So why is it called Newtonian physics? Well, it's named after Sir Isaac Newton, okay? So Sir Isaac Newton came up with the three laws of motion, and it's our three basic laws that most things follow today. Thanks to Isaac Newton, we've been able to build rockets and go into outer space, use space travel, um, get to the moon, put up satellites, uh, design cars that are amazing, like really awesome vehicles. Uh, Newtonian physics is just great in most modern day common applications that people think about. Quantum physics is the physics of tiny stuff, really tiny stuff. I would say like atoms, if you guys don't know what atoms are, atoms are the smallest divisible pieces of matter. Okay, so for instance, if I have this book right here, okay, I'm going to chop it in half, okay? Then I'm going to chop it in half again, boom. Then I'm going to chop that part in half. Then I'm going to chop that part in half. And I'm going to keep going and keep chopping it, chopping it in half, okay? There's going to be some limit to how far I can chop this thing, all right? And that is the smallest, smallest piece of the book, okay? Now, most books are made of paper, and a very common element in paper and wood is carbon because... All life is based on carbon. So if I were to chop this up real, real small, we would get finally to a carbon atom. Okay. Now, after we get to that carbon atom, if we try to chop it again, we're going to have a real hard time. We have a really, really hard time to chop that carbon atom. All right. Um, and that's what we call fission. Okay. Fission means to rip an atom apart. Okay. So it's very hard to induce fission on a carbon atom because it's so tiny, right? But on a bigger, nice plump atom, an atom like, I don't know, uranium, okay? Uranium is a big, nice fat atom. It's got um, 92 protons and it's got, uh, I don't know, let's just say a lot of neutrons, okay? And if you guys don't know what those are, I'll do another podcast talking a little bit about protons and neutrons. Anyway, uranium's nice and fat. It's a bigger atom, so it's easier to rip apart, okay? So this is quantum physics. Like, why do these little things rip apart? Why do electrons go in and interact with things? If we're talking about electricity, we're going to start talking about quantum physics. If we're talking about light, we're going to start talking about quantum physics. Um... Newtonian physics cannot deal with light, electricity, fusion, fission, okay? Um, these are all different uh, processes that Newtonian physics can't deal with, especially including our microprocessors that we use in our electronics. So, anyway, that was it for our very first kung fu physicist podcast i hope you guys enjoyed if you like it please leave a comment leave me a like okay i'm going to try to post clips of this on instagram i'm going to try to post it on youtube please follow us we would really appreciate it go to wing chun illinois or wing chun uh spelled w-i-n-g-t-s-u-n and we will see you guys later peace